they actually developed some kind of super-powered characters for Wonder Woman to fight that didn't require huge amounts of special effects. They had Count Cagliostro, who was a master magician, evil master magician, of course. Hello, Diana. Hello, Wonder Woman. They had a toy maker who made an evil robot duplicate of Wonder Woman so that they could actually have Wonder Woman fighting herself, which was a pretty cool episode. So they would do what they could to kind of give her a television rogues gallery of villains, but they couldn't put people in flashy costumes and have them plotting to destroy the world. They had to more plot to destroy downtown Los Angeles or, you know, take over a health spa. Phil Jimenez is a very meticulous, detailed artist. And when he was drawing Wonder Woman, he came from a place of deep fandom. He wanted it to be the absolute best. So as he wrote and drew the character, it was really reminiscent of not only the best of the TV show, but the best of the comic books. Wonder Woman, the TV show, had a huge impact on the way I approach Wonder Woman because Linda Carter was Wonder Woman, is Wonder Woman. I, I think if you talk in any sort of comic circle, you'll find that we all agree she is the epitome of this character. She's the living physical embodiment of this character. What I took from her was a sense of grace and style and dignity, which you don't often see in most female characters. Most female characters in comics today are played sort of as sex vixens or sort of a little more kittenish or just as sort of men and, you know, and, and female in women's clothing. And what was great about Linda was that she brought to this character this incredible femininity, sense of style and grace and a regality which I still use whenever I draw Wonder Woman. I just think about the way Linda Carter stands in that costume, and that's how I approach the character. Adam Hughes has been doing Wonder Woman covers for ages now, and he imbues his covers not only with an incredibly sexy Wonder Woman, he also tends to put in a little bit of humor. One of the things I loved about Linda Carter's portrayal of Wonder Woman is that she wasn't just a macho male character written with with a, with a woman in mind. She actually had this great sort of gentle quality to her. She didn't seem like she wanted to go out and kick butt. She wanted to go out and sort of spread her anthem of, uh, of peace and everybody can get along okay and don't step on women because women are just as good as anybody else. But then when push came to shove, she could push and shove harder than any of the men. One of the things I was lucky to do was my last issue of Wonder Woman, I wanted to do an homage to Linda Carter specifically because she was such an important figure in my life, sort of creatively, and she was such an inspiration in, a, in her role as Wonder Woman. And so I drew an issue and got permission from DC Comics Legal to make sure that I could use all these various costumes. So I drew a DC Comics version of Wonder Woman as Linda Carter. It was a one-time only deal, but I was very happy because it was very, very popular. And I was eventually able to give her a copy of that comic, sort of to show her that um, her embodiment of that icon has lasted to me since I was seven years old. When I've had to draw Wonder Woman, I'm somewhat remiss for the fact that I can't just illustrate Linda Carter because here I could make my drawings look just like this woman, but I don't have the right to just wipe her likeness in my illustrations. As far as memory of the TV show itself, some of the details of that might be lost to time, but the depiction of Wonder Woman is clearly the most impactful of her entire history. It is impossible to forget what Linda Carter was to that character. I think she came back to help you. Us. Well, let's hope she comes around again. I think you can count on it. I think one of the most memorable shows, and the show that I get a particularly warm feeling about, is Wonder Woman, because when it was right, it was wonderfully right. And we managed to create the world of the cartoon and yet make it a very successful show. It was that, that great thrill of actually seeing, you know, your favorite, your favorite comic book character, something you've read in a book, and all of a sudden it's running around on your TV on Friday nights. When there's someone that helps you to believe in yourself, and that's the greatest gift that Wonder Woman has given, is that you can believe in yourself. And I think she's alive and well. I think that she lives in us all and um, she will never die. Wonder Woman has lasted now for over 65 years for a reason. Part of it's she's just an iconic pop culture character, but the other part I believe is because the underpinnings of her character, the reason she was created, the message she sends. To say that we can live in a world with love and peace, show women that they didn't have to be weak, they didn't have to be passive, and that it was okay to fight for what you believed in.
The only time I have taken the costume, I've taken it out twice. And uh, both times were for my child's kindergarten show and tell. I was a hit. I was definitely a cool mom that day. Whee!